So now we're going to talk about some important logic blocks. And the reason for this is that we don't usually build directly with AND and OR gates. So we showed you AND and OR gates, but we're not going to build circuits out of them most of the time. So let's take a look at how this works. So what we usually do is we route signals, so this is one or more wires connected together, to larger blocks. And we're going to walk through an example of this. So say we have two inputs, A and B, and we want to generate the output if B equals A plus 4. Now you could imagine building this with AND and OR gates, but it would be a real mess and it would be hard to understand. Instead we're going to use larger blocks. So we're going to start out with an adder. What does an adder do? Well it takes two inputs, in 1 and in 2, and it generates a sum as its output. So it adds them together. It's a binary adder. We're also going to use a comparator. So what does a comparator do? It takes two inputs and it tells you whether they're the same. So we now need to hook these things up in order to generate this output equation, does b equal a plus 4. So we're going to take a, hook it up into our adder. We need a constant number 4 somewhere. We're going to hook that up into our adder as well. And then we take the sum of those two things and hook it up into our comparator. And the other input to our comparator is b. So now our comparator is going to generate a true signal here when its two inputs are the same. One of those inputs is b, the other input is a plus 4. So this output is going to be true when b equals a plus 4. And you notice we didn't build this up with AND and OR gates, we built it up with much higher level building blocks. So here's a question. How many bits wide does this wire need to be to have the binary value 4? So if we want to have 4 in here, we obviously can't have a single wire because a single wire can just be 0 or 1. How many wires do we need to represent the value 4 here? Well, we need at least three bits. So 4 in binary is 1, 0, 0, so we need at least three bits to represent 4 here. So this is a three-bit bus, and that means the other input to our adder is also going to be a three-bit bus, because our adder adds two things of the same size. So it takes two three-bit values and adds them together. So now how many output bits is this adder going to have when it adds two three-bit inputs? Well, the answer here is 4 it's going to generate a 3-bit sum, plus it needs an extra bit in case there's a carry out or overflow. So we have a 3-bit sum coming out of this adder here, and then we have a 1-bit carry out coming from here. Our comparator here is also going to take our 3-bit B in. So our comparator is now comparing a 3-bit input here and a 3-bit input here, and it's going to generate a 1-bit output here, which is just does A equal B, sorry, does B equal A plus 4. So let's go ahead and try this out in Logisim. So here's Logisim, and now we're going to build some more complicated stuff. So we're going to go under Arithmetic here, and we're going to grab an adder. We're going to create our adder, and we're going to tell it how many bits we want it to be. It's going to be a three-bit adder. And you can see our adder has two inputs, and it has down here exactly that carry out that we were looking at before. So there's our adder, and now we need a comparator. So here's our comparator. I'm going to stick our comparator down here, and we're going to change our comparator so that it's three bits wide. Now we can go ahead and wire them up. So we take the output from our adder. It's going to be one of the inputs to our comparator. Here's the equal sign from the comparator. That's going to go to our output here. So here's our output. Now what else do we need? Well, we need two inputs, A and B. So here's our input. Let's label it A. And we'll go ahead and hook up our A input into the first input on our adder. And you notice what happened here. Logisim is telling me I have an adder that wants a 3-bit input, but I have an input, I have a value over here that's just 1-bit, and it's telling me I've got an incompatible widths here. So I need to go into my input here, and I need to change it to also be a 3-bit input. Now you can see those 3 bits, and Logisim stops complaining. Now we need another input over here, which is our B input, and the B input also goes into our comparator. So here it is into our comparator. Again, it's complaining about incompatible widths, so I go and set that to 3. And now I'm just missing the 4 here. So if I go in Logisim under wiring, I can grab a constant. I can put my constant in here. How many bits is this? Well, it's three bits. And I want it to be value four. So I enter four here in hexadecimal. It gives me a value four. And now I can go ahead and hook this up. And here's my circuit. Now to test out the circuit, I can make sure simulation's enabled and reset my simulation. And now I can go ahead and test it. So is this true? Well, it's telling me it's not true. What does my equation say? Well, it says does A, which is zero, plus 4 equal b. Well, 0 plus 4 is 4, and that doesn't equal 0, so that's not true. Let's try setting b over here to be 4. So 1, 0, 0 is 4 in binary, and now the output is true. 
because this adder went and added up the values and gave me the output here. I can click on the output here and I can see what it is. It's one, zero, 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 which is four. And that's gonna say that it's equal to the value I have here, which is one, zero, zero. So you can see that I built this in Logisim and the circuit works the way we expect. So the lessons take out of this are we don't usually build things with AND and OR gates. We usually build with these larger blocks and inside these we use AND and OR gates and the wires that connect them up are not usually single wires, but they're usually buses so that we can carry larger numbers on those buses.